Snoochy Boochies. What's up, y'all? It's your boy here, Adam Pecora. We banging it out for another one. Requiem for Tuesday. Thanks for joining in. Here we are, finally available everywhere at launch. We made it. We big time now. So get ready for things to pop off. Uh, so I have some news. I don't want to call it good. Uh, I guess it's not bad, but... Uh, I watched Jay and Silent Bob reboot last night, and uh, yeah, I've got thoughts on it. Let's put it like that. Uh, I mean, I'm going to dive in. We're going to do a whole Kevin Smith thing here, I think. I think it's time. I think it's time we dive in. Uh, I kind of grew up on it, you know what I mean? I'd mentioned before how like Eminem was like my music thing. You know, I was like seven. I was like, this is it. You know, when 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 you're seven and an album is so big that you heard about it, that's kind of saying something, uh, especially when it's like that. So, I mean, I kind of couldn't avoid it. It was product of the time. Clerks or Kevin Smith, I don't really know how that happened. I think it was just watching Comedy Central a lot as a kid. I mean, not, not a bad thing either. This is not I'm a very this is a very pro Kevin Smith podcast. I want to I want to get that stated at the beginning first things first because while some some emphasize of his the slack that is given to him is justified, I don't I believe that most of it is not. Okay? And I think that for a lot of reasons which I will try to not forget anything to touch upon today. Uh, but yeah, I mean, first of all, leave him alone, but second of all, I'm going to not leave him alone and totally go against that at some point, because I mean, frankly, we're just being honest here. We're just being honest, right? So I, I got to keep it straight. I got to keep it right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to start with the movie from last night and then we'll kind of, we'll do a little Tarantini magic and, uh, we'll, we'll do some jumping around. Um, uh, th- here's the thing. I'm going to say spoiler alert just because, like, on the off chance, you had a nice lead up going in. I kind of let it go. Um, I mean, you don't have to, though. You can just listen to it. Because, frankly, if you're a fan, I'm a fan. Like, I'm admitting that I'm a fan. You don't need to watch it. It does not help. Okay? I mean, if your thing is, like, I haven't seen this or Yoga Hosiers yet, I mean, definitely skip Yoga Hosiers instead. Like, if you're choosing between one or the other, don't get me wrong there. But uh, y- you're not missing anything. Okay? Uh, there's moments in there. But, uh, yeah, so spoiler alert, I'm going to go through the plot because it doesn't fucking matter. It's, it's, it is what it is. It's kind of a thing. I like to equate it to already, I guess, uh... Dumb and Dumber 2, and while on the surface level that may be similar, for those who don't know, both films feature like a whole long lost daughter plot thing, and I would say that Jane Silent Bob's is even less thought out than Dumb and Dumber 2, but about the same amount of effort was put into the movie. And that's not to say that Kevin Smith didn't put a lot of love into the flick, He's great. I I know that he cared about it. Like, I can tell that. But, uh, I mean, it's like all the meat and potatoes were there. Like, the steak was there, but the sizzle wasn't, if that makes any sense. Like, it's like somebody wanted... It's like the way Slapshot, like, has a straight-to-DVD sequel from, like, 20 years later. It's, like, the same type of quality. It's, It's as if somebody else made it, frankly. I mean that that's at least how it seemed to me. It it doesn't have any of the things you like we liked about it. It was all very forced. Um Yeah, I'm kind of speaking generally without any information. So let me dive in. Uh basically the whole movie starts out on this ridiculous and terrible opening, okay? There the quick stop is locked up like it's a zoom in of the quick stop but like next to it is a place called uh cock smoker okay good good reference we're starting off on top but like no no back thing you just already like okay that's where this is and then the cops show up and raid it and it's donald rawlings but he like doesn't even really get to shine so it's like why even bother having this be here and then the other cop guy that's with him is one of uh heath ledger's joker's minions 
it was the guy, I don't know, one of the laughy guys who died, you know what I mean? The the creepy thin looking guy who looked like he looked like uh, the live action version of the guy of the corpse bride guy, like the character. So if you brought that little claymation guy to life, you'd get that fucking slimy prick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so and then there it's like a weed shop that they're they're pretending is a chicken restaurant, and it's like, I guess why because they were in Clerks Two and like there was a movies involved in it that it's all of a sudden gonna just make sense for them to open this restaurant and that also doesn't make sense because like they they point out that silent bob lost weight because he was vegan but so it's like that's not a good cover and i guess they got busted because it wasn't a good cover so i mean i guess that kind of justifies itself but like why why would that be a thing you know i don't know and then they're immediately like going into a thing and then justin long is there but he's like doing a bad character so it's like why does this need to be justin long kind of the same thing with donnell rawlings and then the whole thing in the court just kind of breezes by it's like here's craig robinson for no reason he doesn't really get to do anything either and then it's just over and then they're like okay we're going to do the plot of strikes back again now while that could, while that's just an instant easy criticism to make i do like that they were going to do this plot again like that is a very kevin smithy thing uh, smithy <laughs> uh but like some probably don't know or don't remember clerks got an animated series that was very short lived but was actually excellent and on their second episode they did a clip show which was awesome because it only had footage from the first episode. And I thought that that was hilarious. And I think a lot of people did. So I get trying to do that whole like meta reboot structure comedy thing. And that's a very thing that he would do. But like it just didn't have any of the juice. There was just none of the magic. And at the same time, like, look, I don't want, I I don't mean this to be like a judgy thing, but I mean like, hey, hope everything's good. Jason Mewes, you got it, it, something changed in his face. You know what I mean? And it's got real, like, Artie Lang mugshot vibes, you know? It's like, what ha- like your nose collapsed or something. Or he got work done or something, maybe. I don't know. But he looks like a completely different person. It's It does not get easier. It's not like the Irishman <laughs> where you're like, all right, fuck it. I guess I'm used to it. No, I, I I couldn't get used to it. I've seen the guy too many times in too many movies, too many too many times. You know what I mean? Just like I've rewatched his shit so much. It's like I I know exactly what Jay's supposed to look like, and he doesn't look like this guy. And skinny Kevin Smith, hey, like I, I you know while Silent Bob doesn't work as well as a not fat guy, you know, glad you're thin thin Kevin 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 Smith. Glad you're in good health. Good for you. But. It's weird when they look old, and it's weird that they're old because they're, you know, they were young drug dealer guys. Anyway, yeah, and so they just end up, like, having to go to Hollywood, but it just ends up being, like, really easy, and it just seems like, I looked it up, somehow the budget was $10 million, but it really seems like they were just on, like, sets the whole time, and it's like, if they spent that money to build sets, then maybe you shouldn't have, I guess? I don't know. Like, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back was a genuine road movie for a minute. And then, like, I actually like it. I'm a defender of that flick. I'm going to get into it because I'm going to do a movie by movie thing once we uh, once I can wrap this fucking plot summary up. But uh, th- this is not a se- – it's, like, technically a sequel to that, but it's, like, not. It Trust me, it isn't. It is not in the same spirit of that movie in any way. And – the thing is, is that, like, I get that, like, every movie in the View Ask universe, for those who don't know, Kevin Smith built the cinematic universe way before anybody ever did. And every movie kind of had its own tone, even though they have all the same people, and this one has all the same people. But uh, I feel like a sequel should still kind of match its tone, where, like, Kirk's kind of did. Again, I'll get into that, but uh, th- this isn't like any of them. If anything, this is the most like yoga hosiers, which is the worst thing you could ever hear, especially considering they're supposed to be giving their own movie. But like, Jane Silent Bob Strikes Back was just like its own crazy kind of thing. It was like the spoof on a sequel being bigger and better, but like it, it wasn't really a sequel to anything, kind of. And like, those guys are always doing like crazy, wacky adventures, and this one just wasn't. It, it fell flat. Like, that was supposed to be like an even like crazier step up. You would think that the sequel would be, and then like, where do I begin? I mean, they he they instantly find 
Shannon Elizabeth's character, who I don't remember, but they were like the love interest from the original movie, and they had like a real thing, and I get like she probably just didn't really want to do it, but she's in and out, no problem, and they just like squash that. And I don't know. I mean, long lost kid is Kevin Smith's kid, and it's like I I get it. Like you're you're trying to like make something happen for your kid, and that's awesome. Does it fit into the Jane Silent Bob movie though? You know what I mean. And I get and he like references everything that people don't like that he does or has been doing in the thing and makes a joke at it, and that's kind of neat and cute. But I mean, it still doesn't make that wrong. You know what I mean? Like. If this was the mo- I don't I just don't see how this was the movie that you wanted because it's not good and it's not like your other ones. And and I don't mean that like all of your shit should be the same, Mr. Kevin Smith. I just mean like tonally it's not as funny, like there's not really much happening. Uh yeah, they just kind of get from place to place with relative ease. They don't really explain where they're going and then all of a sudden there's just a bunch of kids in the van. Um, what well, he's taking his long lost kid with him because she just threatens him with a knife and it's just like all the stakes are super low and at the same time they're going to the kids are trying to go to the blunt man and chronic thing that Jay and Silent Bob are trying to go stop but they don't realize that that's the fucking characters in the thing. It's like, come on, you're going because you're that big of a fan and the person doesn't realize it which I guess still kind of gets squashed in the end but uh, it was thin. A- everything was just done real thin. And then, like, all the cameos were kind of half-assed. I loved, loved that Damon was in it as Loki. Cool cameo. Uh, it just kind of happened, which kind of sucks. But they did a cool thing of, like, putting the movies of the universe, like, unified together for once. Uh, which was cool, but it was in a movie that wasn't good. So it's like, I almost wish that that didn't happen. I would have rather just seen, like, a quick little, like, short film of this then um yeah i i'm one of the few who saw the animated movie that they did as well and that was like way better than this that movie was funny as hell i think if anything like if you want to do the sequel like why not actually just make like a campy blunt man and chronic movie like it looked within jay and silent bob strikes back i think that that would be like a cool meta thing to do and you can put a million jokes in it and affleck was great too and a lot of the cameos were dope i don't think that it was cool that rosario dawson wasn't the character from clerks 2 let me just say that. Uh, I think that that doesn't really make any sense. Um, and unfortunately, Randall wasn't in it. I think it's because like he doesn't act anymore. But, uh, yeah, uh, just don't see it, uh, frankly. Uh, I don't really see any reason why. So I'll, I'll stop talking about it now. Yeah, uh, there's nothing in there that I, I don't think that a fan would get anything out of it. And certainly someone who isn't in on any of the jokes wouldn't get it. There's a lot of like clever little meta jokes in there, but there, there's enough stupidity that it outweighs it, and there's enough just wasted time that it doesn't even matter, frankly. And I, it's disappointing. You know what I mean? Because it's like the potential is definitely still there. Because I'm a I'm a total Tusk apologist. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That movie's awesome. The whole Johnny Depp character it fucking sucks. And if he wasn't in it, that movie is significantly improved. And I think that Moose Jaws would have been dope because that just sounds fucking incredible. Okay? But it's it, it's just weird. And I can't put my finger on, like, the transformation that's happened. Because, like, while the guy was never, like, touted, touted, it definitely seems like things have shifted. And I think, you know... He he referenced all of it in the movie. So I mean, if if you want to, if I'm gonna, like, I'm not gonna totally like discredit anything. To very much to Kevin Smith's move, he knows exactly what people think about him. He p- pretty much said he knew what people would think about that. Uh, I just honestly, as a Jay and Bob guy, don't think that Jay and Bob guys would like it. I uh, haven't. I haven't talked to anyone that's even seen it. Nobody really seems to have made the effort, and that kind of bums me out, but, I mean, I took this long to do it myself. Uh, so that's kind of unfair. But, all right. With that, let's go positive. Okay, I'm going to dive into the old shit. We're going to go down memory lane, and uh, I'm going to breeze through, like, movie by movie, but, I mean, like, you can just listen to, like, the downgrading quality because, I, here, I got the filmography right here. Okay, so boom, obviously, we all know the first one's Clerks, 94. 
Now, I know that it was only in, it was only filmed in black and white because of, like budgetary concerns, and he basically just made this movie like maxing out credit cards, which is fucking amazing, super cool, and like you know, like a dream come true, literally. And it sounds like something like everybody wishes they could do, and he got an opportunity and he took it. And hey, while sometimes it was pretty clear those dudes were just line reading back and forth, the acting was solid for having no actors in it, and like all the filmmaking was solid for not having any like filmmakers. So, I mean, all around as an achievement and... Uh, excuse me. Uh, as an achievement and as a technicality thing, like, the the movie's great. It's great. They talk about normal shit the whole time. It is the most, like, true to its title movie. Like, th- those guys know who they are. And, like, yeah, wacky things happen, but it seems very natural and plausible. And it's just like, this is just one hell of a day. You know what I mean? And, yeah, he really just hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's just a knock out of the park. Uh, Mall Rats, weird comic booky commercialized sequel to the thing. But I love that the characters carried over. And they did a whole thing. Uh, but, I mean, for me, Mallrats is just like, I think like it was almost like trying to play it safe, kind of. But it's like, a, it, I don't know. It's like trying to expand a thing that didn't really need it. You know what I mean? Like, we kind of needed a whole new direction, but this is kind of just like an extra thing. I feel like Mallrats was kind of seen the way the Strokes' second album was. If that makes sense. Everybody's like, okay, you kind of did this already. Which... Uh, I, I don't agree with him on the stroke side of things, but, uh, I might actually get into the strokes later because that new record pretty sick. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Uh, but yeah, I think that it was kind of like that same vibe if I had to guess, but you know, it was just kind of whatever. Pretty funny has its moments out there, which is cool. Kind of made strike back made sense. I guess that that may be what the sequel to that is. And then, you know, ch- getting Affleck and Damon involved for the next couple movies are fucking sick. So like, you know, great relationship there and I I'm glad that like that pairing is in there cuz that's super fucking fun to watch. Uh so yeah, Chasing Amy's next. Probably like one of the more well critically received, but I guess it's because it has like a more serious thing to say. Uh not a huge fan. I mean, it's just whatever. It's it's cool, like Blunt Man and Chronic, Jay and Silent Bob are in it. You know, Bob gives the great speech at the end. Blah blah blah. Guy wants guys in love with a lesbian. It's tragic. I mean, that's pretty cool. Jason Lee's awesome, but you know, it doesn't tickle my fancy. It's not really where where I'm at. And then we get into, so I w- I would probably put Clerks at one so far, but. It's getting knocked out immediately because I think Dogma is probably his best movie. And if you don't know what happens, basically, uh, this woman realizes that or finds out because of an angel who's fucking Alan Rickman, which is awesome, right? And she finds out that she's like the last descendant of Christ. And then she has to go to a fucking church to stop Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, who are like these evil angels banished to earth to like stop on to like, they have to like stop them from entering this church. Otherwise like the universe will end pretty fucking awesome. And guess what? The stakes are kind of there the whole time. It stays funny. It stays interesting. There's not enough special effects that they ruin the movie or the action sequences. And I think it's just pretty well done. There's a lot of, great comedy legends in there i mean fucking chris rock is part of the main cast sorry i'm going full cylinder we're we're going kevin smith i'm in the fucking zone right now i'm just feeling it uh but yeah dogma's fucking awesome okay i highly recommend it if you haven't seen it it's where buddy christ comes from you've probably seen the big jesus who's winking and pointing you know they they just Another one, really well done. Glad that that movie got made. That doesn't seem like anything that anybody would allow to make. It has like a whole warning at the beginning about like, sorry Catholics. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just a great flick all around. Everybody's in it too, like the whole universe cast. And when I say that, that usually means, you know, basically just everybody that's ever been in a Kevin Smith movie is in, the, in that movie. It's fucking awesome. Then Strikes Back, same thing. Everybody's fucking in it. Will Ferrell gets thrown in the mix. I mean, that thing's just a blast. It's more of like the stoner comedy, but then it's like the meta comedy. It's great. I'm a big meta guy, you know. If you've been listening to this, you know. I'm the guy you want to listen to when we're talking meta shit because 
I I honestly thought about doing a podcast episode where I listen to myself like my a previous episode and then I like roast me talking. So it's like doing like audio commentary over my audio comment. And how about that? Right? Uh so yeah, that's probably too much, but that I haven't done it. So fuck fuck you and fight me. Okay? I think it's a good idea. Uh but yeah, strikes back blast. Okay? Fucking great time. You know, not a high quality movie, but it's not supposed to be. It's fucking wacky and it's nuts and that's it's definitely the most broad of all of them. I, I if Kevin Smith had a thing up until that point, it was definitely like being going down a very specific lane. Uh think I think like or like Seth Rogen, like the way he got started just making all those wild movies. You know what I mean? Maybe not got started. But yeah, I guess kind of. Like, they all have one really specific plot line, and you're just following that and kind of hanging out along the way. I guess I can see the parallels there. I, I didn't even really talk myself into that one that much, so if that doesn't connect, uh, don't worry about it. Never saw Jersey Girl. That's where we're at next. So I don't know. Uh, even the, even every, everybody involved in it kind of seems to make fun of it. I think he said he made it just to buy a house. So... That doesn't really strike me with a whole lot of like, ooh, got to jump on that train, you know. So we'll skip that. Uh, Clerks 2, listen, doesn't do justice to the first one, but is solid as a sequel, okay? I think that a lot of the material in it gets weak at times, and they definitely overdid it with like the sexual stuff, especially considering... Uh, it was never really a big Kevin Smith thing anyway to do a lot of that. Like, even the vulgarity of it, I think, a little bit. Not that it bothers me. It's just, like, it just didn't really land that much. And But it, I think that it kind of is an accurate portrayal is what would have happened to those guys had nothing changed and then had, you know, had they ended up at fucking movies. Like, or where would they have ended up? Like, that's what would have happened if the quick stop burned down. Like, imagine if they actually did work there that long. I fully believe it, you know, and Dante would still be after the girl and Randall would still be just saying fuck it. And then like, you know, it just has those nice little emotional moments where they're finally just like, all right, man, like we're fucking old. Like you're all I got, you know, and it was, I believed it. I bought it. So I guess if you didn't buy it, I get it. Um, and I think Jane and Bob, this is when it was just like, OK, they don't really fit into this movie. They didn't really need to be here. I think that Strike Back probably should have been their last thing. I think it was originally supposed to be like the last view askew movie period. Right? Um, where like all of these interconnected characters and actors were finally going to end there. Now, I like that Clerks 2 is a part of it. I think that ending on Clerks 2 would have made sense. But, uh... Yeah. Well, so, okay, so that does end the original universe until we get up to reboot. So then I'll just kind of breeze through these next one. I get that I've been fucking ranting on it. Listen, it's important, okay? Uh, it's Isn't it weird that I've talked about how I want to do Paul Thomas Anderson and how I want to do Quentin Tarantino and blah, 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 and those guys have less flicks. I've seen all of them. I like all of them, and I'm still here doing Kevin Smith first. <sighs> It's a testament what'll fucking happen sometimes. Let me tell you. Things just work out. Because I watched that movie and I was like, I cannot wait to talk about this. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Zach and Mary make a porno. Uh, whatever. You know, it was okay. Didn't live up to the hype. Seemed like it could have been okay. Cop out. Didn't bother. Everybody shits on it. Same thing. Kevin Smith himself. Everybody that was in it. Just seems like an all-around disaster. Red State, never saw it. Most people didn't. Seems like it might have been okay, but clearly nothing noteworthy. Tusk, already mentioned, loved it, okay? Super underrated, super well-made on a super low budget, which is also why the reboot thing, the budget being that high, doesn't make sense to me. It's like, did you put all that money in on cameos? Because it doesn't seem like... Those, it seems like all of those people are definitely friends with you and like you. Because you're in a, first of all, again, not a negative Kevin Smith thing. This is a pro Kevin Smith prod, podcast. Big fan. He's a seems like the nicest, coolest guy ever. Okay? I'm just saying, 
all those people are your friends. So, like, wh- where is that coming out of your budget? I just don't see where that budget went. Uh, I mean, I don't know shit about movies, so, like, like movie budgeting, anyway. So, like, I don't know what costs what to do what. All I know is, like, this movie didn't even come out in fucking theaters. So, I don't know. Like, it, what, it couldn't have been on advertising. You know what I mean? Uh, just a question there. That's all I'm saying. Uh, ho- holidays. I don't know what that is. Says it's an anthology film. We did a segment where we'll just pass that. Yoga hosers. Absolute atrocity. Absolute atrocity. Look, again, look. What you're doing with your kid is great. It's glad you guys get along and all that stuff. And you know, <laughs> you're working together. That's cool. And she's not a bad actress. I get it. So it's just like, can we get her more roles? Sure, but if you keep making, if you make bad movies for her to be in, then no, she won't get more roles because it's like, oh, that's that's a bad movie, you know what I mean? And uh, trust me, Yoga Hosers was a bad movie. It was terrible. So, don't see it. Uh, everything that could have gone wrong with that movie, it it was just unwatchable. I'm sorry. Uh, I sat through the whole thing. So uh, I did it for you. Please don't. Uh, And then we're on to reboot. So yeah, it's definitely been a pretty downhill decline since Strikes Back. (sighs) Listen, Kevin Smith, I love you to death. I think you have. If you're gonna close it, you gotta channel something. I'm sorry, but. The the over like the entire core of the Viewisk universe, all of those early films are fucking awesome. You can't do the the Morrissey thing. I couldn't. There's somebody else I'm trying to think of. Oh, Eminem. Wow, it all ties back again. Jesus Christ, you can't do the like where your second half is outweighs. Like you can't have your bad outweigh your good. So, I'm just saying, like, if it comes to a Clerks 3, I know there was going to be a Clerks 3, it fell through. There was going to be a Mall Rats 2, it fell through. Look, I get that Reboot was, like, fan service for the sake of it, but it was also poking fun at it and blah, 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 and whatever, and it makes sense, given the subject matter of Strikes Back. But if the next thing is just going to be more fan service just for the sake of it, then don't do it. Because there were no fans at one point. You know what I mean? Like, we got here because of you did what you wanted. So, like, even if what you want to do is fan service, then I guess nobody can stop you. But you definitely don't have to, and the fan base isn't fucking going anywhere. Okay? All I'm saying is, Harold and Kumar, they went Christmas, and that was still a good flick because it was an original new Harold and Kumar. And, again, that was referenced in Strikes Back. He nails all the comparisons, and he knows who he influenced. He knows blah, blah, blah. He knows everything. But awareness doesn't make your movie better. That's all I'm saying. Just because you poked fun and, like, made... Made sure you, like, you knew that you're in on the joke and everybody knows that you know what people are saying. Uh, it, like, you know what I mean? It doesn't make what I'm watching any higher quality. It's like, okay, well, I'm gl- like, it's good to know that you know, but if you know, you know, you should probably do something about it. That's all I'm saying. So, and I, and I say that with love. You know, you never want to, you never want to see your grandma fall down the stairs. But it, it might happen. And you got to be ready for when that happens. But look. Watch Clerks. Watch the Clerks the Animated Series. Clerks 2. Watch Strikes Back. Dogma. All like all classics right there. Chasing Amy's great. Mallrats is g- good. Um, a lot of his stuff, you know, it's underrated. It depends on how you look at it. You know, looking at the Rotten Tomatoes isn't going to paint the picture. Uh, kind of like early Sandler. It's kind of a Sandler type trajectory, but I would say that Kevin Smith's earlier stuff is way higher quality than probably anything Sandler's put out outside of Uncut Gems. Uh, and that that's saying something. I'm a pretty big Sandler guy. You know, I like young Sandler. He was the fucking man. You know, but like if you put Clerks, 
I, I'm not a Billy Madison guy. I'm a Happy Gilmore guy for sure, though. But if you want to put Clerks, put Clerks up against like any Adam Sandler movie, I'm probably going to take Clerks. Probably take Strikes Back as well. But that that is a pure nostalgia thing. I watched that movie when it came out like fucking all the time. So that's a whole other factor. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that it's cool that you like the fact that he built a whole universe is fucking awesome. But we don't want to see it get tarnished. Um, I've done my rants on the Marvel fucking universe. I think that they're fucking stupid, okay? Kevin Smith's way more unique and way cooler, and he's a big comic book guy, and I think that if somebody did give him the chance to make a $100 million movie, he would do great things with it because he fucking cares. He's a fan of the shit. He wouldn't ruin it, I think. I don't know. But I think if you're going to give anybody a chance that, you know at least clearly knows how to, like, fucking make movies and, like, care about characters and shit, give it to him. I mean, he fucking writes. They've given him, like, comic book series to write. So, just a thought. But, uh, yeah, love Kevin Smith. Sad for where it's at. That I, I'm surprised I went that deep into it, but, hey, you know, there was, there was a lot to cover there. Uh, but we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Let me know what you think about Kevin Smith, you know. Um, we can, we can talk about it. Uh, I may have forgotten to mention at the top of the show, but please rate, review, subscribe, whatever, comment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it'll really go a long way towards my thing. Uh, turnout's been pretty solid since coming out, uh, streaming everywhere. It kind of just instant boost, uh, which makes a hundred percent sense. Uh, sometimes you gotta just, uh, fucking do something to realize that it's a, People were right the whole time, you know, uh, but whatever we out here now, we grinded it out. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking into some merch options. It's looking kind of promising. Uh, I'm not going to make any promises, but, uh, could be coming soon. Something to watch out for. Uh, as always, the easiest way to keep up with stuff is to follow me on Instagram at Adam dot R F A T I G. You feel me? Uh, one of these days, man, I swear, I'm just going to bust out and lay down a freestyle out of nowhere on y'all, and you won't even believe what's coming. I'll bust a big LJZ 96 style freestyle. That would be impossible. If you haven't heard that, uh, there's probably a few of them, but there, there was one that uh, came on the other day, and it's just like, Jesus, you listen to the whole thing, and they go like, what do they do, like 64 bars a piece, back and forth and back and forth, and it's like, I, I get it, you know, like the New York people, I kind of get their whole, like, arrogance, like, the the whole 90s era thing, where it was like, this is the place to be, I mean, they get a point, you know, they did kind of crush it, they kind of invented the whole thing, you know, you gotta be proud of something, and then Wu-Tang was just like, yeah, we're over on Staten Island, get us out, somebody help, but they made it. Oh, speaking of which, though, I will add one more thing. Uh, Jane Saint Bob, for the gimmick of the movie, but kind of interferes with the whole thing of Strikes Back, their favorite movie is now How High, and then there's a Method in Red cameo. They did a great job. Let me just say that. Method Man, always incredibly charming. I have never not liked listening to Method Man say anything. So let me just throw that out there. M-E-T-H-O-D, man. You know. You know how it is. Uh, but yeah, speaking of La Musica New York, the boys, the Strokey Strokes, dropped that new record, the new Abnormal, on Freitag. Und ist gut. Sehr gut. That's very good uh, for you non-whites. <laughs> of Germany. Uh yeah, I fucking loved it. I think that this is the, I think that they've been like kind of well, here's the thing, right? So clearly after the first three records, we all know there was like a power shift, blah blah blah, everybody wanted to do something different whatever. And then like Angles and Come Down Machine came out and it was them like kind of like the, yeah, they definitely clearly went in a new direction, but they kind of just, like, picked a new style to do. Uh, 
They didn't really like change what they do, if that makes sense. Like they're playing in the same exact style, just like with different instruments, like synth versus guitar. I feel like it's still very much like these are 100% like strokes songs. But I think that that's always a thing that they've been able to master is like being really signature, which I I mean, it's unbelievable. The thing is just like what sucks for them, but something's always going to suck for everybody. It's just that like it's one of those things where you either like how the strokes sound or, or you don't. I don't understand how anybody doesn't, frankly. Uh I was in the boat of, like, I don't like them because it's, like, cool to like them, right? I was like, they're just, you know what I mean? I don't like cool stuff. But then I listened to it, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, everybody's right, you know. I'm not going to make a big thing out of this. And then, you know, look, they clearly have had their riffs and their beef and, uh, it's and like, struggled with, like, media stuff and whatever, and, you know, that all sucks, but... uh. I honestly don't see any flaws in their discography, really. I don't like their third album. I mean, I'll admit that. But that was right when everything changed. And then, like, when they pivoted to, like, a different E kind of style, like the synth-based stuff, I was like, oh, well, this is refreshing. And there you go. Problem solved. Uh, but everybody else doesn't seem to think that way. Like, mostly it seems like just because of their attitudes, though. And it's like, well, the attitude doesn't change the music. The music fucking rips. Uh, but... Seems like everybody came around this time. But I think that this is the first time where they, like, tried to change their sound. Like, they literally changed their sound by changing their instruments before. But I think that their style was kind of the same, like I said. But I think that they're, like, they literally, like, finally changed their style. I mean, all these songs are long as shit. They have a lot of movement to them. Um... There's and then like but it's still unmistakably them. There's still gonna be those times where that guitar just fucking riffs and then like you know, Albert Hammond just gets his just shreds and like solos it out and then Moretti's just like a fucking robot on the drums and Julian, I mean, just belted it the whole time. I mean, his vocal performances were amazing over the whole thing. Uh they tried cool stuff with synths throughout and like layered it in with the guitars and like their song change ups and stuff. And just overall, I mean it's just like Wow, yeah, y'all really put in the time. And now, I mean, when you're fo- when you're seven years between records, the records got to be good. They put out that EP a couple years ago. I was like, yeah, but it was a little, it was a little EP, a little refresher. So it's like, whatever. Who knows what that means? Uh, but yeah, I mean, and the Basquiat on the cover, moi, uh, makes for beautiful merch. Immediately when they put the hoodie out, I'm like, of course I want it. Didn't get it. You know, there's a pandemic going on. But uh, I might, you know, have a nice Basquiat Strokes hoodie, you know, rare collab, hashtag, where we at on the hype piece meter there. I mean, look, is this it? I, I don't see any way that that's not always going to be their best album. I mean, I would probably put that in my top. Oh, I got to watch what I say. Uh... 25 albums ever guaranteed now that may be broad it may end up way higher than that i don't know but i think it would almost for sure crack the top 25 uh that's a list that i have wanted to put together to try to go over on an episode and i am not happy with thinking about like me publishing it and then like stumbling upon (laughs) like a post and i'm like oh no i forgot (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? And you realize that you left off like six albums that should be in your top <laughs> like in your top ten and you're like, oh fuck. What a narrow minded thing. I should have put more into that. You know? I don't want my like top records or top whatever podcast to end up like a paper I threw together the night before, but that's likely the amount of effort that I would put in at this at this stage in my life. So we might have to wait on that list. But I think that that, al- that that album is, like, that good. I think that it is all-time good. I think that the hype leading into it, while I don't know what it was like because I was, like, five, uh, I think that it was all totally justified. I mean, I can only imagine what it would have been like to be, like, branded the saviors of rock and roll and, like, all this crazy shit and to be, like, the only band that anybody gives a shit about because there are no other bands. It's like, you guys are surprised these guys are acting like assholes. They're doing exactly what you guys want them to do. It's like a a whole back and forth thing. But whatever. I don't get how the media turned on them for being rock stars. It's kind of pointless. Uh, 
And then the second record's fucking awesome. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. And I think that they changed enough. I think uh, when I used that comparison earlier, it was mostly just because, like, that's what everybody kind of says. Uh, but I think that those records sound completely different. They're, like, they don't even sound like they were recorded the same way or with the same instruments or any of that shit. And they totally switch up the styles a bunch. And I don't know. It's it's a, They sound... <laughs> totally different to me but i i i guess i kind of get it but i mean what did you expect uh it's two guitarists a bassist and a drummer you know that's the band and they make post-punk it's like what what did you think um like i don't know but they clearly diversified i think no the record's not as good a sophomore record's hard though and for it to be that good is really impressive uh third one i don't like it Gave it maybe one or two chances. Could probably give it another one, but we'll see. I don't know. And then Angles and Come Down is how I got into the Strokes. Weirdly enough, I I loved how I love Tap Out and like Welcome to Japan and like it starts way better than it ends. It doesn't really hold up well as like a whole record. I don't think, but it's cool. And Angles is cool. Like they're cool records. They sound good. It's not really something you could listen to all the time, but it's good. Like if I was ever in a convertible, put Angles on. Let's go. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's cool because it sounds like they kind of like, it seems like Julian uh, brought over like some of his more experimental side from the voids over, which I'm all for because I thought that their last record was unbelievable. So if you haven't listened, dive into that. Uh, so yeah, that's my current state of media consumption. Uh, I kind of tried to start 90 Day Fiance. Boy, let me tell you, it's pretty fucking rough, okay? Everybody keeps talking about this show, and, like, I get why it's crazy, but it's still that TLC editing where there's only, like, 18 minutes of content. So they, like, edit scenes as before and after commercial breaks, so you watch the same, like, minute over and over again. Like, you watch it, like, three or four times an episode, and it's, like... I think what they're really trying to say is that, like, all of these people, like, don't really have any interesting interactions other than these little quick moments we show. Because, like, really, every single conversation that's on this camera is, like, something awkward or something weird or something dirty, you know? Some of the people just seem like fucking scumbags. Some of them seem like they're, you know, there's a Mormon kid. He seems like he's about to fucking kill somebody at any second. He is horrifying. Uh, he's like, yeah, she used to party in Russia, but we're Mormon now. And he just keeps saying, like, we're going to fuck when we get married. Can't yet. He's just, like, <laughs> wide-eyed into the camera, white-knuckling. <laughs> like, it's just his pants. He's just like, bro, we're going to get married. And we're going to fuck. Okay? Take that fucking spotlight off of me. Like, he is about to burst. That dude has jizz up to his knees, okay? Somebody pump that guy clean. I hope that they did get married. I'm probably not going to go through with watching the season. Uh, it's mostly just, like, horrendous age differences or, like, most of the people got baited into it. I'm sorry. But at the same time, so the premise of the show, if you're not familiar, is basically, like, oh, I met a foreign person usually through the internet, a couple of them met him in person, and they're like, I want to marry him. They're coming. We got 90 days in America. If we're not married in 90 days, like they're going to go to prison or whatever. And it's like, okay, it's probably not even that serious. Whatever. Everybody says that, like, they have to decide. From what I've read, the visa that you have to get that this show is about means you're committing to the marriage as a guarantee. Uh, but I mean, I, I get that, I, I get that that's not a real thing for most people because you realize that you abandon everything, you know, everything and everyone that you know, uh, and you might realize that that's a bad idea for some crazy bum fuck from Alabama or whatever, who, do, who turns out to not have that much money. <laughs> uh, but they give the premise out like it's a fucking game show. <laughs> It's like, all right, brought them in. They got 90 days to choose. And I don't know. It, it's just fucking weird. You know what I mean? It's an old, it's like a 60-year-old guy and then like a 20-year-old chick. And it's like, well, wouldn't you leave that impoverished country? You know what I mean? I feel like 
if some if some like cougar lady in Canada was like, "Come here, big boy," you know what I mean? Come get your dinner. <laughs> You know what I mean? I might have to put a flannel on and, you know, bunker down. I might have to get up there. That's all I'm saying. If it's like, hey, here's two grand a week. All I need is the lawn mowed. You know, I might have to put one in for the team. Take one. Whoops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't know. It kind of goes with that, like, love is blind shit which is just an, was absolutely insane. I hope that that never happens to me again. But boy, was I in. But it, it it's just fucking crazy. I mean, how desperate could you be? What I don't understand is like, okay, some of them definitely like have to be real people, right? I, I guess that's the thing that I still don't understand to this day about reality television. It's like... I know that a lot of it is, like, set up and produced, but, like, is how much of it is, like, scripted? How much of it is acted? How much of those people are, like, people versus actors, if any? Um, I really don't know. And I think that that's part of the problem. I think I'd like to know how much is fake and how much is real and how much is set up and how much is just, like, a quick edit for the camera or whatever. Because I find it very hard to believe the people that look like some of the people that look like some of the people that are on these shows, especially Love is Blind. It just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. And uh, the thing that I really didn't like about that show is that it had to be a man. Like, you had to get engaged for it to happen. It's like, no, no, this would be improper timing whether you saw the person or not. Like, none of this makes any fucking sense. So, I don't know. I don't think your experiment's gonna go very well. Don't word it like it's a scientific thing. Like, you know this shit's gonna blow up. That's the whole point. I, so, I guess if you're stupid enough to think that that's an experiment that's worth trying, then yeah, you do deserve to be on the show. I always forget about how stupid people are. It, it's a, it, honestly, it's, it's not, it's a weakness of mine. Because I just take it for granted that, like, maybe, you know, people kind of understand what is a good and what isn't a good idea most of the time. But, you know, then I'm at Jewel today and these people are just fucking open dick slinging everywhere, you know, like mouth breathing on the water bottles like it's nobody's fucking business. There's one way signs on the things and you're just coming at me full speed, cart to cart. You're going to look me dead in the eyes, open your mouth, stick your tongue out, leave a little bit of saliva in the air. You know what? You're lucky, bro, because I don't need your moisture. I'm blocked off. OK, I follow the rules. This is the best time to be a guy who, fo like, this is the, not to be a guy who follows the rules. You don't want to be a guy who follows the rules, like, all the time. Or a girl. Like, you just don't want to be a person who's just, like, always following all the rules. But now is the best time to follow them. You know what I mean? Even if you normally do not follow rules, follow these. Just follow them. And then you can go break as many rules as you want later. You know? You're ruining the pizza party for everybody. It's like when everybody's like, yo, if you guys are just quiet for today, for 20 minutes, we'll have a pizza party. And then one kid, like 18 minutes in, is like, I could be a bitch. And they're like, Jimmy, what was that? All right, that's it. Pizza parties canceled. You know, that wasn't a good bit. I'm sorry. But that's just a reflection of reality. You know what I mean? And then we all beat the shit out of Jimmy. We threw fucking dodgeballs at his face until he bled out of his ears. There's no Jimmy. Anymore. Just kidding. But yeah, I mean, just fucking listen, please. You know, just, you're not... You don't know more. Nobody knows more than anybody knows about this. You know? And it's like at the same time, all those people posting those like, Biden's a creep. Look at how terrible the president is. It's like, yeah, we we know. You know, you've been posting this for like two and a half years. <laughs> you've had the same friends on, on this on Facebook the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, 
the people who don't agree with you are still going to not agree with you, and the people that always have still will. You don't really need to keep doing it. Like, why are you updating it like you're fucking Anderson Cooper? I don't get that. It's like, oh, a new terrible thing happened, and you're like, oh, my God, can you believe this? We need to do something about it. It's like, yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, I, I agree, but just like you, I'm also not doing anything about it. You're just telling, the again, the same people over and over again. I, I think they get it. You know, I think a lot of people certainly agree that we should do something. Not not a hot take. You know, not an original thought to think that maybe something should be done about corruption and shit. Maybe maybe attempt next time. Maybe 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 take a shot yourself. Uh, Because it seems like uh, MSNBC wrote that article. Seems like you didn't really do anything. Glad you got a point of view, I guess. But we all knew what it was already. So, uh, yeah. We get your stance on everything. You've made it abundantly clear, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. That was one of those uh, hot moments. You know what I mean? When you're just like, you know what? I'm going to say something. And, like, that's when you finally tell your aunt with, like, the mole on her neck that she needs to stop kissing your face because she wears lipstick for no reason and she smells like mothballs. And it's like, you don't need that juju on yourself. Yeah. I don't have an aunt like that, luckily. But uh, I've, I've been in those moments. That, you know, there's some ladies with some goiters that want to get all up in your grill for no reason. And I, I think that that's unfair. You know what I mean? How, how about we have a wokeness for children? How about we do that next? How about we stop kissing little kids on the face all the time? And by we, I don't, I don't include myself in that because I wouldn't do that because I'm not a psychopath, okay? Do that to your own children. Sure, show love and affection to them. They need it. If you're just some old lady who's just at, you know what I mean? Like, sure, you got invited, but you're just at some party with a bunch of people. Why are you, like, kissing everybody's kids and, like, tickling them? It's like, they're not dogs, you know what I mean? It's weird. They don't seem to be into it. You know, people are just powerless. And then you're a kid. You're like, Mom, that lady's gross. And they're like, shut the fuck up, okay? Man up. We're at a party. Be nice. And it's like, what do you mean be nice? I was just manhandled by a very pruny, thin woman. Her bones stabbed me. That doesn't even make sense. Who's sharpening their fingers? You know what I mean? She didn't even have nails. She got that osteoporosis. She don't get no nails. She's got those bony-ass fingers. How you got those sharp-ass bones, lady? You know what I mean? Well, I got a little dizzy there. <laughs> Just thinking back. All those traumatic moments with those fake pearls dangling in your face and those bright red and blue blazers. Why are you wearing blazers? I'll never understand it. Uh... Like, I've never understood the guy whose move when it's time to dress up is to rock the blazer with the plain black or white t-shirt under. Now, as a guy who cannot stand dressing up, A-plus effort on trying not to, but at the same time, it is like the most transparent lack of effort ever, and someone will always comment on it. And so, like, I don't think, like, it's one of those things where, like, we can power through. And not. And I'm, I want to say we because, like, I wish I was one of those guys, but I just know that it doesn't work. So if it was one of those scenarios where, like, you just wear it, wear it, wear it, wear it, and eventually just like, all right, fuck it, let them wear it. We're not going to talk shit anymore. I, I'd, I, I'd be one of those guys. That would be my casual move. But I know that it's not. You got to wear the collar. The collar is more important than the jacket. See, my move is always, like, wear the button-down nice shirt. Maybe tuck, I like tuck it in, but loose, you know, I don't give a fuck. Don't even wear a belt, you know. But I'm, I got the shirt on, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know, look at that schlup. You know what I mean? It's like he doesn't clean up nice. But it's not like, oh, look at that lazy piece of shit. <laughs> right? Even though I'm wearing less clothes and look don't look as good, I look messier. I, I still think it's less frowned upon. Uh, and while I don't agree with it, 
It is just how it is. But I, I mean, like, like Seinfeld. How did he? Get, that's all he did to upgrade. He just threw the blazer on. That doesn't make you like distinguished now, <laughs> or what? You know what I mean? Whatever it's supposed to be. I get why Stan Van did it. You know, back in the day, coaching the Magic, you can't be, you can't be rocking those collars like that. <laughs> when you got that husky neck, I I'm lucky. Like the husky, the neck ain't husky yet. The chin husky. The the chin is a big meatball. I get it. You know, trying to get rid of it. We're seeing. We're seeing how it goes. Um, but yeah, I I I get your move, Stan Van. Um, but uh, we 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 see right through it. You know what I mean? You ain't classy. <laughs> you just ain't classy, and that's fine. But just know that we know. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna close up here on one quick little sports run. So they're they seem to be talking pretty aggressively about trying to get these leagues back together. And I think the idea of like, sure, like you can clean out a hotel and like quarantine it proof and all those ideas are awesome. And the NBA like makes the most sense. There's less guys. There's 12 dudes, you know, per team. It's pretty easy. And like, if you know you're only going to play nine, like maybe only bring out those nine, keep them socially distanced on the bench and then have the other dudes like in, in the locker room distance apart. Whatever, whatever the system is, put it in a little practice facility thing and that's cool. But I do think that if you're going to have 30 teams worth of players, granted, maybe not for that long if you're just closing out the season, but then still 16 teams of players in like lockdown. I mean, I guess it's not for that long of a period of time. You know what I mean? Just to finish out the season and do the playoffs. This will be an issue for baseball. But I do. I think, yeah, I think that like over time, those guys are going to lose their minds. How how long can you stay there quarantined like that? Like with your family is one thing, but you're going to be just with like your players and coaches. I mean, it wouldn't be right to like allow families to be permitted and all this stuff. And like, I get that there's a lot of money at stake. Um, but it, will the sport be hurt by that? Because here's the thing, like do we want sports back. It doesn't mean that we want it to suck. You know, because while I think that like a couple games probably would work, just like wrestling kind of worked, it needed music or something. It, it needed some kind of noise. I think the NBA could use the same thing, no matter what. I think it'll be weird in silence. Um, I think baseball could kind of work in silence. It's pretty quiet most of the time anyway. I think that watching baseball might be improved. Now's the time to put in the pitch clock, because there's literally no reason to have these games be slow. There's nobody there. To get their money's worth. I put that in quotes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like baseball, you couldn't do 162 games keeping those guys trapped in one place the whole time. It just seems wrong. And it's like, what happens when somebody gets injured during a game and then they have to go to a hospital and then they're back at risk? Like there's those little things. Uh, I think like you can try, but then like you don't know what the excess is going to be. And if the plans are for, like, June or whatever, then sure, maybe everything will be a little bit easier by then. Uh, but I think that trying to contain it and not expecting people to, like, interact with other people is, like, impossible. So keeping it like that is hard. And, uh, like, the TV guys, aren't they always just, like, in a truck? You have to, like, spread them out across some room? Like, I think it can work. Don't get me wrong. And I hope it does. I mean, we're missing sports. I wish, like, I was watching Password. Like, yeah, fucking get it, get it, get it. How many points is that? Let's put some money on it. Who you got? The old lady, young lady. What do we got? Oh, that guy? He doesn't know shit. Fuck him. 50 bucks. You know what I mean? Uh, I think now would be the best time ever for the XFL, or not the XFL, sorry, I'm going to get to that, for the arena, for arena football to finally emerge. I mean, it had its moment, like, a decade ago, maybe longer, where it was on like ESPN, ESPN2, even had like the, the Arena Bowl on ABC and stuff. And I, I mean, it had like ownership backed by like former players and like Bon Jovi, I think, had a team and shit. And uh, I knew like the players' names, it was getting pretty accessible. And then out of nowhere, like the money just didn't hold up and it backed out. And it's like if somebody would have just, somebody with a Billy would have just invested a little bit of cash into there, I think everything would have upgraded. They would have got more sponsors, better TV deal, and it would have blown up, and we could have had a year-round football thing where like, it could have went in the offseason of the NFL. I think that that's a missed opportunity still to this day. I'm upset about it. Uh, but I could see how hockey and basketball would both be pretty feasible. 
Uh, so I mean, we we they they should be figuring out where he's gonna go. I mean, hockey you could play off fucking side. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be in any crazy place. Like here, we have the MB Ice Arena. It's the their practice facility is right across from the United Center. It makes way more sense to do games in there. I'm sure you can get cameras and shit rigged in and just have like essential people spread out across the thing. Um. It totally seems like a thing. I think, like, just doing the playoffs would be easy. It's unfortunate that, I mean, you do have to close out a season. At least, like, for the races that are still tight, it's just not fair, or you'd have to do it bigger. Um, But I don't think that altering any of the seasons makes any sense either. Like, you can't cut a season short. You can't change any rules. It's in the middle of it. It's too late now. Uh, So I think either, I think you got to play it out. I mean, or you have to suspend it. And it's going to create a loop that changes the whole timing of the thing. I mean, it's going to be tough. They're going to have to make really harsh calls. Um, As a fan, I mean, I'd love to see whatever I can fucking see. Put more Ocho shit on. I'll watch bowling. I'll watch whatever. I think we can bring back anything now. We can bring back chess. Let's do it. You know, I'll watch fucking anything. Uh, I'm craving for some competition to see. That's for sure. Uh and speaking of which, like, rest in peace to the XFL. They seem to finally do it right this time. That that was why I was bringing up the Arena Football League. It's because that is how we can watch another kind of football. It can't be the same size field with, like, the NFL's got all their guys. You know what I mean? And there's, like, backup guys, and there's practice squad guys, and those guys were are barely some of the guys that went to the xfl you know what i mean like some of the guys didn't even leave practice squads and stuff they're just street guys and while i think there may be a handful of dudes that the nfl missed out on but for playing that's a whole nother story playing time i'll talk about that forever but i think like on a roster they at least have all the right people their whole thing is to just have nfl caliber players And when you look at half of the NFL and half the teams aren't even competitive in the playoff hunt, uh, how do you expect there to be more guys? There's not enough guys to have 16 playoff teams. You know what I mean? Like we were, we had, we're, we're having division winners sub 500 still. There's not enough guys to make every division competitive. So how can there be an entire league's worth of other players that can put on a product that rivals it when I don't even want to watch, you know, the Bengals play, the Dolphins, you know, name fucking 10 more teams, the Chargers, whoever. So that's why I'm saying, at least if it's in the Arena League, like, yeah, maybe the skill sets are a little different and it would be definitely harder to get called up to the NFL, uh, it's more entertainment for us because those guys can do more damage. They can score a bunch of points. It's exciting. It is it is the football to basketball what slam ball is basketball to football. Slam ball is like more basketball and then arena is more football, obviously. But uh, I miss slam ball. I wish that that would have caught on as a national sport too. For all my fucking slam ball people out there represent, that shit fucking rips, okay? Uh, But, yeah, I think, like, watching a different kind of football is a solution. Like, the CFL is the opposite thing of that. They made the field way bigger, which I think is a problem. It's too spread out. The compactness of arena football makes it fun. It makes it exciting. It fits in regular stadiums. Uh, I just think the, in, like, the infrastructure could be there. I think, like, it, all it could take is, like, one billionaire to invest enough. Like, I think if Vince McMahon would have bought the Arena Football League, it would have made a lot more sense. There's more infrastructure in place, and he can just put more money into it. You know what I'm saying? And then just have the season be spring. He wants it to be counter. Like, put your money into a thing that already exists. They, like, own patents and shit. You can get your advertisers and TV contracts on that. Like, Vince, come on. You're already an arena guy anyway. Like, you know all those places. You already have deals with those things. You can make more things happen in that circuit. So I think if we want to do anything about a future of, like, a secondary football, we need to save arena football and not only save it, like, from dying because it is losing its battle right now. The league is down to almost no teams. Um, not, Not just, like, resurrect it, but, like, bring it to heights it has never seen before. How are we missing this opportunity? I mean, I've... (laughs) 
as dumb as it sounds, when I was a kid, I wrote letters to the NFL being like, yo, help this thing and make it like a farm system. I didn't understand that that might not necessarily work at the time. But, I mean, if if he could even do the old school XFL thing where, like, you do more hokey story modes and stuff because you're in the arena. You know how production works in an arena. That's cool. But either way, like, the sideline interview stuff, all the innovative stuff they just did with XFL that people liked, bring that to the arena league, dude. You can do it for even less money and get those same TV deal. I don't know. I'm just repeating myself at this point. I just wish that that would happen. I also do think lacrosse could have caught on as a sport, but that that's like really reaching in the cookie jar. I think that the Arena League is definitely a legitimate thing, and I think if somebody sat down who thinks that they wouldn't like it and they just actually watched a full game, I think that they'd understand. So that's, that's my sports corner for today, and uh, I'm going to get out of here on that. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, rate, review, comment, blah, 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 and everything. Do all that shit. And uh, don't forget, never forget, I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator. <laughs>